Hello, dear viewer, and welcome back to Knights of Ages on iOS with me, Jalanon. Once again, this game is a bit mature, so yeah, yeah, you should probably have parents watch the episodes and stuff before if you are a child, slash, this really isn't made for kids. Uh, yeah, I would say the rating of Ages 12 plus maybe needed to be bumped up a little. I don't know if there really is too much of a higher one other than like 17 plus, but that might be more appropriate. I'm also going to turn up the music because it seems softer. Okay, there we go, I think. I'll just crescendo there. Anyway, so we made it to Warbin. There was a big festival. Apparently, Aiden was hitting on pretty much a baroness, so... You know, we'll see how that works out in the future, I guess. Just like the Springs Festival, Lady Teresa looks positively magnificent. She's the most special person here. I'm rather curious about who she is. I don't think she's the Earl's adopted daughter. What are you talking about? She's not the Master's daughter? The Earl and his sons are exceedingly polite to her and carefully maintain their distance. Does this look like the way one would treat an adopted daughter to you? Quiet. If someone overheard us, we'd be mincemeat. Oh, so she's probably the princess. Got it. Okay. Baron Warren's luck hasn't been too good lately. He was chided by the Lord a few days ago for dispatching troops on his own. Today, he was rejected by a lady. I'm afraid this is going to blow back on us. Yes, the Baron's temper. Idiot, keep your mouth shut. Okay, okay. Working guard. I heard Earl Harlan is in poor health. Can you come here? I don't know. I heard the same thing, but Talons and Gary seem to be doing okay. Perhaps the Earl invited Lord Talons here himself. Maybe his health is taking a turn for the worse. Anyway, it's not something we should be talking about. Morbin resident. Ah, oh, I love how lively the spring holiday is. I feel like something's missing, though. Everyone from the Lord Baron's territory is here except for Baron Levitor. You mean the Baron Levitor that used to be the Lord of Wildtown? He's dead. Don't tell me you've lost your senses from all that dancing. Dead? He wasn't even old yet. How did he die? When? Why didn't I know? He was the supporter of one of Prince Cato's enemies. After the war, he was executed. It wasn't too long ago. Why am I just now hearing this? Maybe it happened while I was ill? Yes, when you were ill, you didn't even recognize your own mother. Dang. The pestilence. It takes us all. Okay, can we upgrade? No. Curses. Okay, then. Well, so we can't upgrade. Weapon store. Anything better? A ring and sword. Hmm. My hit rate is much better than the wood axe. Ha. Huh. And then we could also have a very nice... Ooh. Yes, a very nice shield. But I don't have enough strength still? Hmm. Huh. This does hit more. It does the same amount of damage, doesn't it? What? Okay. Well, we'll do that. Because <laughs> apparently it's better. Okay. Hmm. And I haven't seen anything saying which weapon you wield really matters yet. To, like, skill proficiencies. So, we're not going to worry about it. Alright. Let's get you a buckler, sir. Boop. Okay, so we did that. Anything we want from here? Oh, the prices are up. Oh, sheep, though. Buy low, sell high. All right. We'll take seven. Boom. So we bought those at cheap. And hopefully we can sell them at uh, expensive. That's my theory. Except I don't see anything that lets me sell yet, so that probably has to do with castle maintenance. Everything else is kind of expensive, so no. Oh, wait. Because I bought all those sheep, can I sell them now? At a... No, I cannot. Man. Okay. Well, we tried. To play the economy, but no. Daniel's proposal to Marissa was accepted. Dear Daniel, your expression of love has made me very happy. I accept. When shall we hold our wedding? Yes. Finally, I'm going to get married. <laughs> Congratulations, brother. Looks like you're going to be the first one of us to do so. We're going to hold a great wedding for you, Daniel. Well, it would be just great celebrating a tavern as 
As long as all of us get together. No. What? Oh, there's a secret wedding. That's interesting. And then short gathering. Looks like maybe that helps morale more. Oh, maybe because I've only got so much bread? Interesting. Because I do have sheep now. Yeah, bread and ale. So that's why you want to buy those. With the auspices of the priest, the bride and groom followed the ancient customs, completed the sacred ritual, and received the blessing and gifts of outfit. They may now spend the rest of their lives together, and are here to pledge devotion to the gods and prove their loyal love. I hereby formally vow to follow the gods' will, and to faithfully be your husband and protect you, in richness and in poverty, until death do us part. I also vow to follow the will of the gods and faithfully be your wife and take care of you forever. I'll be buried with you and your family after death. Okay. So that's interesting. I'm guessing they only have the one piece of art. Huh. That looks kind of like the princess character in one of those nobles. And then random priest boy. Okay. And I shouldn't say priest boy. Priest man! Anyway, roughly three years later. Oh, we haven't been killed off yet. Good. Okay, how time flies. Oh, Marissa's pregnant. New mercenaries. Okay. Yep. Excellent. Yay, it's a handsome baby boy. Charm, can I change that name? Apparently not. <laughs> Charm it is. Um, or hum. If you uh, do the CH noise, the hum. The mercenary corps welcomed a new member to their family. They wanted the child to be independent and close to nature, so they named Daniel's child Hum. Chum. Whatever. Chum? No. Probably not. At the same time, they also began to do some special business with Gary Burley and Jacob. Their relationship with the Burley family became close, and they occasionally performed work for House Bairns. During this period, Kato Signing was crowned king. The Bloodhound Mercenary Corps continued to develop and made a fair amount of money. Okay, return to Berg. Okay. Gary's here. Looks like we've got some work. The Bobbitt family has a warehouse by the lake. I want you to burn it down and kill everyone inside. The Bobbitt family? You mean Warren Bobbitt's family? Yes. As always, you will be paid upon completion of the task. But they're nobles. Why should we provoke them? Isn't that just going to cause us trouble? These opportunist rats have made a mess of this kingdom and must be dealt with. The Bobbitts may be nobles, but they must be taught a lesson. A simple task won't cost that big bucks, friends. You are smart fellows. Don't leave anyone alive. Okay, let's move out. Hmm. Well, I may not have liked Warren, but that doesn't mean his whole family should die. Dang! Okay, then. Huh. Well, any new chats? Doesn't look like it. Any new weepins? No. Hmm. Nope. Away we go. Oh, dear. Well, we're mercenaries, I guess. Yeah, and all of our other dudes aren't as well prepped. So, away we go. Guard the warehouse exit. Don't let anyone escape. Who are you? What are you doing here? We're mercenaries. All you need to know is that we're here to kill you. Okay. No, uh, no dishonesty, at least. So, there's that. Apparently, in Viking culture, what was wrong was if you did something secretly, right? Or didn't fess up to doing something. So, murdering somebody was okay as long as you were like, I murdered this person, apparently. I don't know. I had a friend doing some research on Viking and Scandinavian history, so that was an interesting thing to learn. Like, uh, what was it? There's one dude known as the Fox, who basically confessed to murdering a king's servant during one of the king's speeches so that nobody could say he did it secretly, basically, and didn't confess to it. So by the time they could react to him doing something, he was already gone because nobody could hear him during the speech. And then somebody from the king was like, oh, here's what the guy said, and he spoke in riddles. And they figured it all out. It's like, oh, well, too late now. All right, enough random history stuff. Um, I guess we just go. I think everybody's where we need them to be. Alright, Aiden can't quite ride up there and deliver the beatdown, so we'll do that. I have Sean follow up. Right, yeah, you guys are fine there. 
That guy could hit Jelenaut, but he's got 22 HP. So we'll do that. Brandon is, of course, a madman, so he can just go right on in there. Uh, and you go over here. Only one dude can attack you at a time. Nice deflection. Slash block. Help! Spare us! The villagers are innocent. We don't need to hurt them. How do we know that that dude's really a villager? <laughs> okay, well. Villager. Could be one of their family in disguise. Let's be real. Hmm. How much damage can I do? Six. How much can you do? Five. So yeah, we're going to go up here. Boop. Ooh, critical. So then we can do that. Well, yes. I think we will. Cavalry archers. Who knew? Okay, Daniel can do some work. We can do a lot of work with Jalanoth, though. We'll do this. Yeah, because that was less damage. Whereas you, if you get a critical... Nope. Not quite. Uh, Brandon, you keep going. Christian. Should have let Brandon hit this guy. Okay, well, so many blocks. Ah, oh, until then. Fine. Okay, well, I want you to gain some XP. So keep getting XP. Thank you. So. Dang. Moral conundrum. We've been told we're trying to clean up some stuff. Wait, Christian has an ability. Oh, it's fine. That was a massacre. Check to make sure there are no survivors. Set the fire. Okay, so we didn't have to kill the villagers. Yay! Moral problem solved. Nimbleness. Ooh, so I did learn a skill. Plus one speed. Wait, I have nine strength. I should be able to wield that axe, right? Maybe it was just too heavy with all my other armor? Huh. Endurance. Max durability plus 15. So I guess the weight we can lift and stuff. Ooh. Plus precision. <laughs> we still don't have 5 strength yet. Alright, Daniel. 17 vitality. Sweet. Well done. You made quick work of that. 80 silver coins. A month later. Gary Burley returned to Burg. Okay. Now what's this? Hmm. So we've done that. Let's double check some things. Hmm. So they've already got that. Let's see. Oh, Daniel's wedding ring counts as a thing. Will plus three. That's interesting. So, I guess you want people to get married regardless, just for the, uh, wedding ring stat. Huh. Okay, can I... No. I should have the strength. I mean, the hit goes down a lot. That hit percentage is better. Why can't I equip? Oh, uh, okay. What about you? Brandon also has that. Can I... Okay, I, hmm. For some reason I was thinking I couldn't wield it. Clearly, that is wrong. So, okay. He's just going to have a very hard time hitting anybody with it. But it'll do a lot of damage. Did I have another bow? I do, but I can't wield it. it takes seven strength. Alright, and your ability... Hmm. Interesting. Okay. What's your ability? Combo one. Oh. Interesting. So yeah. He's kind of built to be an assassin, I think. Alright then. Let's go back to Bergtown. Good morning, friend. Would you have any interest in some long-term business? I've got a big task for you. What is it? Go to the mountain west of Warbin. Guard the road that leads up the mountain. And don't let anyone go up. Stand guard there for a few months. What do you think? To what end? Why seal off the mountain? The less you know, the better. Only my people can be allowed up the mountain. No one else, including you. Can you do this for me? Understood. Do not worry. Good. Don't let me down, Jalanot. 
Okay. This seems like a setup. We will see. Mm, but I prefer Jalanot to have this thing. It's less attack, more hit. Let's buy it anyway, I think, right? Hmm. Well, we'll buy it. But we won't equip it. Just in case. Uh, anybody else needs stuff? Hmm. Nah. Okay. Can we recruit anybody? Geldrilia, the calculating. The wild horse Adrian, which is funny because he doesn't have a horse. Ah. The hearing impaired Alexander. The dexterous Christopher. For a year. Okay, level 24. That probably explains it. Hmm. Let's see what his stats are. Strength, dex, agility. Terrible perception, though. So, no, I don't... Oh, so you can't just look at their stats. Because I'm trying to escape. And, uh... No, it won't let me. Well! That was probably a poor trade. I'd like to see stats and stuff, but it won't let you. Okay. Hmm. Could probably get another female novice rider. Hmm. Okay. Perception and agility. Why are you a... No, you should not be a novice rider. You should be an archer. Okay. All right. Well, I think it's clear we don't need to do all that stuff anymore. Um, let's go. We have a mountain to get to, but foist. Let's change up the team, I think. Wait, why am I level 8? Yeah, I'm like level 14. Why am I showing up as level 8? Huh. Weird. It's not showing the levels correctly. Hmm. Huh. Well, okay. First, let's just get rid of everybody, except the main character boy. And we try these guys. And anything else? Nah. Let's go back to town. Let's change. You. No, you. You were definitely an archer. Change. Boom. Okay. So she lost the strength she'd need for the bow. But it will. The good bow, I should say. You, Sir Christopher, Strength, Dexterity, Agility. Oh, he gets Dex plus 5, though. His Perception is terrible. Hmm. I think we keep him, though. I mean, he's technically just better than Sean at the moment. Other than the Perception thing. Hmm. You, I think we wanted to keep where you were. Yeah. Right? No, we could make you an archer too. Hmm. We do archer. Yeah. Okay. So as much as I wanted riders, eh, I think that's better. And what are you best at? Everything. You're good. Ooh, gets more XP. Okay. So that's interesting. But I think, for purposes of the story, let's keep our our dude dudes. Our big boys. All right. Christian, though. We don't need Christian. He's level 13, which is cool. We also have another hunter if we want another hunter. Hmm. We'll take level 24 guy, just in case. Maybe being high level will matter for some other things in the future. So, to the mountains we will go. Occupier level 28, Phalanx Infantry. All right then. Uh, also, I should really make sure this guy's equipped. Good thing I checked. Uh, oh, he can use the hardwood bow. Cool, equip. Wait, that's a one-handed bow? 
What? Interesting. So you can use the hood. Hemp outfit, deflection one. Cotton outfit. So this weighs less. So we'll do this, right? No defense. Oh, this has defense, but no deflection. Okay, we'll take deflection. And shoes. Uh, Daniel's got the only wedding ring. Okay, and his skill is just the critical chance. All right. Sean, can you actually... No, you cannot have any other stuff on. Still. Hilarious. Okay, everybody is equipped. And we are ready to rumble. In theory. Since this guy is level 28 and absolutely demolishes all of our stuff. Let's go ahead, take the double-edged axe, and, ooh, wait, crude wood shield is not as good. Got it. Okay. Away we go. Enter bottle. The bloodhounds have been guarding the mountain for nearly a month. Only the men sent by Gary Burley have been allowed to pass. Gary Burley himself has visited from time to time. This is the kind of work we should take more often. It's easy money, don't you think? It's a bit mysterious, but otherwise, everything is going well. I just have a bad feeling about why we're sealed off the mountain, Jalanut. You mean as far as what's actually happening up the mountain? There's probably just someone important living up there. Isn't Gary always delivering stuff up there? Maybe. Guessing is only going to get us so far. Aiden's been up there a few times to check it out, but I don't think he's seen anything interesting. Aiden? I'm going to have to remind him again that only Gary's men are allowed up the mountain. He better not be get spotted. The less we know about what happens up there, the better. Huh? Where is Aiden? Ah! Ah! That voice came from up the mountain. Was that Aiden? Screw the rules, we need to go check it out. All right. Moments ago. <laughs> You're so funny, Aiden. <laughs> well, if I weren't, we'd all die of boredom out here. Well, you'd better go back, Your Highness. It's almost time. All right, Cillian. Let's go. Goodbye, Aiden. Be careful on the road. Uh. Who are you? What are you doing here? I'm a farmer from Warbin. I got lost and ended up here. Lost? Give me a break. I know who you are. Tell me what you're doing here. Honest, I'm just lost. I'm very sorry. I'll just be going now with my armor and spear and... <clears throat> you want to run? Stupid heck. Looks like I'm going to have to beat the truth out of you. Come here. Beat the heck out of him. All right. That's not great for... Oh, Aiden. Oh, Aiden. Can we actually... Uh... Yeah, eliminate all enemies. Clearly that's going to work. With my attack of six. Oh my gosh. Run, Aiden. You're the weakest. <laughs> nope. You have a horse, though. Use it. Oh, goodbye, Aiden. <gasps> no... It is Aiden after all. Look, what's going on? Stop right there. What are you scoundrels doing to him? Try hitting him again and see what happens. Uh, we're going to get our clocks cleaned, I think. Um, we can hide in these bushes. What are they give me again? We're doing this. Aiden, you're kind of done for. I am sorry. My brother from another mother, we, uh, gotta take this careful. Oop. Okay, Aiden, just, uh, you know what? Running would be good. But I'll try, yeah, no. Nope. Oh, he still stays at one health? Infinitely? Nice, so they're not trying to kill him. Okay. Even though... The uh, animation makes it look like they are. Okay. Get up here. And yeah, we get deflection plus 50%. Nice. So, yes. If they would only leave Aiden alone, we could do some more stuff. Where's my other hunter, though? Yo. You're level 24. Where are you at? I should have tried to attack her. Oh! But why though? Stop! 
What's going on here? Your men don't know how to follow orders? Get your men out of here, quickly, before I lose my patience. Oh, okay, that turned out better than it could have. Yep. Gary Burley took control of the situation. The bloodhounds rushed back to Burrow to seek treatment for Aiden. After treating him, the doctor said it was a miracle that he survived, and that he would need a long time to recover. Yeah, parting on bad terms. That was probably going to happen. Aiden's finger injury has recovered. Okay. Well, back to Berg we go. During this time, Aiden's condition improved. However, his right hand was near useless, and he had lost his left eye. Meanwhile, suspicious characters often hung around where the mercenaries were holed up, but nothing ended up happening. Two months later, Gary Burley unexpectedly came to Berg and paid a visit to Jalanot and the Bloodhounds. What are you doing here? I'm here to talk business, of course. Don't worry. You mind giving me an explanation of what happened? Your guys beat the heck out of my man! He still hasn't fully recovered. What do you need us for? He violated our agreement. This you cannot deny. Luckily, we got to him before he could learn anything he shouldn't have. Otherwise, he'd be a dead man. Having said that, your corps is still the most outstanding mercenary corps there is. I've got some work that requires someone capable and reliable. Go to Greenstone Fort to the south and kill the priest in sight. What? Kill a priest? What kind of mission is that? We'll be branded criminals. Don't tell me you're trying to get us killed. You think too much. There are factions within the kingdom that have become extremely corrupt. They are controlled by a group of rogues that hide behind religious cloth. They profit off bribes and they sell intelligence for money. That priest is no exception. These pests must be eliminated. Once this is all over, you'll find yourself with powerful allies, not pursuers. You overestimate the power of these disorganized factions. Can I trust you? Of course you can. Once you kill that priest, you earn yourself a large bounty, and our business can continue as before. Silver does not lie. And remember, you must be quick. Brother, did you give him an answer? Yes, I know it's hard to understand. Actually, I didn't want to. But it is true that we were the ones who violated the agreement. But the price is too much. Poor Aiden. I still wonder if it's a trap. Gary has given me his reasons, but I don't think I can fully trust him. After all, I have to take the lives of my men seriously. I heard a little bit of your conversation. This matter, with his power and influence, if he wanted us dead, we'd be dead already. Doesn't mean we shouldn't be careful, though. Hmm. Well, sounds like we should maybe carve out a little slice of the kingdom for ourselves. No, that's kind of meh. Okay, so... Cross-eyed Phil... The simpleton, it looks like. Christopher the Fox. And the calm Pete. I wonder if you're actually a good writer or not, Pete. But uh, we have too many people already. Right now they're just taking salary without doing anything at the moment. But yeah, they want us to assassinate a priest. Hmm. Suspicioso. Well, next time, dear viewer, we will discover the implications of politics and religion apparently so anyway leave a like if you've enjoyed knights of ages subscribe to see more i was gaming videos comment below to let me know what you want to do after chapter one finishes because i think it'll let me know when chapter one's done yeah. and i hope you have a great day